raising the IQ and bankrolls of sports bettors everywhere. The Better IQ Podcast is your source for sports betting information, analysis, and opinions. Learn. Bet. Win. Better IQ. Good afternoon and welcome to the Better IQ Podcast, a Thursday show. It's week 11 of the uh, college football season. We're nearing the finish line and uh, we got games to discuss starting with tonight. Uh, I got two on a Friday. Of course, a full slate on uh, Saturday. We're going to bring in our regular guest here, Eddie Walls, to break down all of the uh, action. So let's welcome in. Eddie, how are you this afternoon? Good, man. How are you? Good. Good. Been a good uh, college football season for both of us, particularly you and the clients, Eddie, on a uh, hot streak here. Uh, profitable overall, but uh, 18 and four over the last two weeks. That's good for 13 units of uh, profit. And as always, can't recommend strongly enough to uh, pick up Eddie's action here for this uh, weekend. You got the best bet, or you can get all of his selections that available on the uh, Buy Picks page at BetterIQ.com. Uh, Eddie, let's kick it off here uh, with some Sunbelt action as uh, UL Lafayette heads to uh, Coastal Carolina this evening. Seen a big play here on the Raging Cajuns as 11.5, now up to as high as 14.5. Still some 14s out there, 58.5 the uh, total. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's ULL or pass um, in a pretty major way for me. I think the Coastal has been getting by the skin of their teeth against some pretty bad opponents, uh, you know, Detroit's of the world who can't stop anything. Uh, they play tough and tight. Um, they were really impressive against Georgia Southern in a monsoon. But uh, ULL is just on a whole different level. ULL and App State are just kind of the prime times of the uh, of, of the Sun Belt. And uh, not only that, ULL, I mean, they're out to make statements now. They've got to definitely win these games. If they lose any, if they have any kind of, uh, you know, if they have any kind of loss, they might be, they might not, might not be able to meet the Sun Belt Championship, which would be disastrous. Um, I don't think this is much of a game. I think it's over by the end of the first half. I think that ULL can do whatever they want. How about uh, Temple and South Florida? Both teams off of a, a bye week. Temple got off to that hot start, but uh, ran into a couple of uh, buzz saws facing some of those high powered uh, offenses in the AAC and uh, didn't fare all that uh, well, but they get a step down in class here as they head to uh, Tampa. Uh, South Florida, meanwhile, their schedule really picks up here the remainder of the way. Uh, they've taken advantage of a couple of uh, softies. Somehow, some way, they find themselves four and four. Uh, Temple, a one and a half point uh, road favorite here, Eddie. Total of 49 and a hook. Yeah, I would. I, I played under in this game. I think they still would, uh, even at this number. Both teams, uh, much slower pace this year than South Florida anticipated at the beginning of the year. Uh, probably because they lost all their quarterbacks. They lost Barnett, then they lost McCray. Now they have to go with the third string guy, uh, the freshman. He's more of a runner. They're more of a run based offense. Now they don't pass a lot. Uh, Temple's very good against the run. And then, of course, we have Rod Carey on the other side. You know he's going to play bald control even when he, you know, no matter what. Uh, he's a lame duck coach for sure. But uh, actually, I kind of like USF in this game. I just never got the number that I was hoping for. I was hoping to find a three at some point in the marketplace. It got really close and then went the other way. Uh, but I think South Florida is playing for a lot more than Temple is at this point. Uh, Temple's had the usual Rod Carey year. Uh, interchanging quarterbacks, uh, lots of turmoil on and off the field. It feels like every article I hear sounds like the players aren't very happy. Uh, something to look forward to in current and in, in future weeks. I'm looking to bet against Temple. I just didn't get a number that was favorable enough. Let's go over to a Friday uh, Pac-12, and uh, wow, this uh, kind of surprises. You got Oregon State. Uh, much improved this season, four and four. Meanwhile, Washington five and four, and uh, you've mentioned it multiple times. This is kind of a rare, uh, you know, uh, inexperienced Washington. Washington's have been so experienced under uh, Chris Peterson, and now uh, he's having to reload a little bit on the uh, fly. And as a result, uh, they have uh, struggled uh, mightily. Can we trust them laying ten, ten and a half here, Eddie? Sixty-five the total. Yeah, I, I took I took Washington in this game. I don't like Washington as a team, but I've noticed something about Washington. They're very, very good against physical. Or they're very good against these kind of teams, the Arizonas, uh, the offense only kind of teams. Peterson knows how to win these kind of games. It's the high. It's the very, very tough and physical teams. They're just too young to deal with the Utahs, the Stanfords, teams that want to grind on you. Washington's going to struggle with teams like Oregon State, who are a little bit smaller that they can bully. Uh, they run away with. So I bet Washington State small. I'm, I'm sorry, I just bet Washington, not Washington State, obviously. But uh, just a small bet, but I really liked it. I think that uh, Oregon State, who's an unbelievable story this year, 
they're going to be really, really great for a lot of years to come. They, they really did a wonderful job by getting uh, Jonathan Smith. He's a really good coach, it turns out. And uh, obviously, he's Peterson's understudy, so Peterson's going to know how to coach against him. Um, I, I, I grabbed, uh, I grabbed uh, 10, and you still can most places. I think Washington's the play. Over to uh, Saturday, Clemson, you talked about uh, making uh, statements, and uh, the market likes to uh, bet into that on occasion. Is uh, Clemson 9-0, and but uh, quote-unquote disrespected uh, in the uh, C- uh, college uh, football playoff uh, rankings here. So I don't know how much stock you want to put into it, but uh, nevertheless, Clemson opened 30, now up to 32 and a half as they head to NC State. Total play down to 53 and a half, Eddie. Yeah, I laid the number the second it came out. I, I could care less about any of that rankings, BS or whatever, and the whole entire extra motivation angle. Uh, this NC State team is pitiful. Uh, they have no offense whatsoever. I think that they're going to end up probably in the very late 100s in uh, total offense. They, they This is their fourth quarterback they're trying out this week on the field. Um, they have no run game. Um, that's why we knew the going in that this was a rebuild year for NC State. I don't think that anybody knew that they wouldn't be able to get 200 yards against a Wake Forest team. Um, you know, th- th- this has gotten to the point now where it's going to be scary for a couple of years, I have a feeling, with this offense. Uh, Doran is a very defensive-minded coach when it comes to terms, you know. I mean, he likes to play uh, defense over offense, and I don't think he recruited very well. So this could be a long-term effect. But I think that uh, Clemson, regardless, if they score 35 points, I don't think NC, I think they have a good chance of still covering this game. Let's stay in the ACC here, Eddie, as Florida State heads to Boston uh, College. Willie Taggart shown the door, and uh, this kind of sets up for like a, uh, I don't know, like Varsity Blues, where uh, Tweeter takes over the offense and they're running the oop-de-oop with uh, Kendall Bryles uh, now in uh, charge. Are you expecting any change, though, in all seriousness, uh, with uh, Florida State? Because obviously, uh, Bryles and uh, Taggart, uh, you read between the lines and uh, you know not necessarily on the uh, same page of what the uh, Seminoles want to uh, do. Uh, meanwhile, Boston College, uh, you know, they've had their issues. You go back that loss to Kansas, but uh, I got to give them credit here as they sit uh, five and uh, four, and they're taking money here now, two and a half, uh, 63 the uh, total. What's your take here, Eddie? Yep, I need a hook. I'm definitely betting Florida State in this game. Um, I always bet on teams after their coach gets fired. It's a wake-up call to all the players that uh, there's being auditions being held, basically. Um, and maybe if you were the second-string guy, you're probably going to get some play at some point. It's extra motivation to keep your, I don't know, to keep your job if you're a starter. But not only that, uh, I think what happens in this kind of situation is that uh, Taggart completely just blew up the playbook and said we're going to do things my way and ran the slowest offense possible and never ran the ball uh cam Akers is a five-star recruit that's an nfl prospect that has one of the fewest amounts of carries in all of the acc um boston college is only a run-based offense florida state can't pat can't stop the pass they can stop the run with the best of them i think they're in the top 10 or 15 and run defense uh florida state's the play here for me Another ACC game here. How about Louisville? They head to uh, Miami. Miami taking uh, money six and a half. Looks like the market's headed towards seven here after uh, the Hurricanes open five at both Chris and uh, Pinnacle. Total play down. Uh, that's not out of the ordinary with uh, Miami. 53 down to uh, 48 and a half, Eddie. Yeah, it's an underplay only. Uh, Miami has no offense. They just can't move the ball. Um, and the, they have so many quarterbacks that they've used at this point. I think they've got something in this freshman kid, Williams, but he's not accurate. Um, and he's, he's definitely trying to run too often. Louisville is starting to play extremely good uh, defense, which we knew with Satterfield, but we thought it would take a couple of years. Satterfield's the best coach uh, you know, out of all the coaches of this year, I think, for sure. Um, and both these teams are playing for a lot. Whoever wins this game is bowl eligible. I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but could you imagine in September thinking that Louisville is one game away from being bowl eligible with four games left? Uh, and then Miami, they've had such a tumultuous year. Um, Miami hasn't won a game as a favorite. Um, they are uh, Them taking this kind of money is kind of odd to me. I think that I might look at Louisville if it gets any higher. But nonetheless, the under is where the play's at. Illinois, I bet you the administration is excited that uh, Illinois uh, one win away from uh, bowl eligibility, meaning uh, let's keep Lovey Smith around a little bit uh, longer. Five and four, they head to Michigan State. Michigan State four and uh, four, but the uh, Spartans uh, taking the money. It's been uh, uh, just amazing to watch uh, some of the movement here on uh, Michigan State's uh, games, uh, particularly from a side. Is this one open 11, now up to 14 and a half. That's a massive move here. Uh, for a side in week 11 of college of football without any significant injury information that I'm aware of here, uh, Eddie. Uh, total of 45. How are we approaching this one? 
I think people are on acid. Um, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, first of all, uh, we have over money in a Michigan State game. That's odd. I don't care who they're playing. Um, I mean, this is a team that couldn't move the ball against Tulsa week one, for God's sakes. Now that was week one, but their offense hasn't improved. Uh, and Illinois has been very, very good against a run um, and the pass. Uh, they shut down Purdue. They shut down Wisconsin. They're playing inspired football at Illinois. Um, the, 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 the over two touchdowns is too much. If this total gets any higher, then I'm going to get involved. Um, I just don't trust Michigan State. I, they've cost me so much money this year. I don't know why I wouldn't stop the ball from rolling, and I'm sure they'll just win, you know, hands down by like 50 points or something like that. But there's no way I can trust them uh, to win a game, you know, 28 to seven. I don't, I don't know, I don't know a score that that they cover and it goes over. So I think I'm Illinois and under. Appalachian State at uh, South Carolina. You like this Appalachian State team, but you played against them last week in that weather game against uh, Georgia Southern and uh, App State off their first loss of the uh, season. Uh, they had to uh, South Carolina. This one kind of tricky, Eddie. You know, what's Appalachian State's mindset? This is not a conference game. Uh, South Carolina, meanwhile, they're struggling, sitting at uh, four and uh, five. Uh, the SEC teams tend to get bet. I've noticed that pattern here the last couple of years. They tend to get bet in these mid to late season non conference games. The South Carolina open four, uh, now up to a six, total of 51, Eddie. Yeah, if App State wins last week, then this is probably going to be a really big bet on App State for me. Um, I think that they were playing for everything. Now they're playing for basically nothing. Um, but I do have a play in this game. I bet over um, at the number that it's still at. Um, and there was some disagreement with it in the market right away, which is fine. But uh, South Carolina doesn't run the ball. They pass the ball constantly, and that's the App State's uh, only Achilles heel when it comes to anything on their team. And there's no way that Drinkowitz is going to run a really slow-paced offense and try to control the ball. Um, he doesn't, you know, South Carolina is very, very good against the run, but not good against the pass. Um, I see we lot. I see. I think that we see a lot of passing out of App State for the first time since uh, North Carolina. Drinkowitz, by the way, has some history with this uh, coaching staff in South Carolina. So it's not like he's coming in this game with no history and no idea what he's going to what to expect. Um, I think that you can go ahead and play over in this game and feel okay about it. Um, no interest in the side whatsoever, though. Penn State at Minnesota. I'm still not convinced, Eddie, and, and I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've paid for it. I'm still not convinced yeah, Penn State yeah. is that great of a uh, football team. But I, I think I've tried to bet against them four times, and the only time I won, I think I won by the hook uh, in that uh, Michigan uh, game. Uh, they had to uh, Minnesota. Minnesota eight zero. Penn State eight zero. Penn State taking money here as they have uh, six now up to six and a half. A uh, couple of seven even monies out there as uh, well. Forty seven and a half the total. Yeah, I, I grab seven, and then you still can grab seven at a few shops for sure. Um, I, I'm on Minnesota. I think that I, I don't have any. I don't have anything against Penn State like you do. I've always thought that they were kind of decent. Uh, you know, I don't think that they're as good as uh, the fifth best team in the nation. And uh, but this is the deal. This is the first time that they've played a truly great offense uh, all year. I mean, um, Minnesota can run and pass on you. Um, they have an extremely huge, experienced offensive line. Um, and I think that Fleck is a really, really underrated coach when it comes to offensive uh, efficiency. I think that Penn, I think that Penn State is in for a world of uh, of a game here. I think that this game is close all the way through, uh, no matter who wins. And also, I like the over now that it's at forty seven. Uh, Minnesota is going to score, period. And uh, I don't know if their defense is that great, but uh, you know, I mean, how am I to know? I mean, they've played very, very good against everybody that they faced. Uh, Minnesota is really still undervalued, even at being 13th in the nation and everything. Like, you know, they're just a really good team. I really, really enjoy what Flex done. Um, the only problem you have here is we, we both know that either one of these coaches, uh, if they get any kind of lead, boy, you know, if, if there's like, I, I would hate to have Minnesota uh, with plus seven and not the over, you know. So I took the over as kind of an, a, a measure of uh, protection because we know that either one of these coaches will really rub it in. Staying in the uh, Big Ten, I, I'm, I'm shocked that you selected this uh, game to uh, discuss here as a uh, Purdue. I'm looking at the injury list. It's like 20 deep. Uh, meanwhile, Northwestern sitting at uh, one and uh, seven. I mean, if you're ever going to win a football game, this one in theory sets up well. But you know, Northwestern's had opportunities at least to be competitive, and we just haven't seen it, Eddie. So you got Purdue open the favorite. Northwestern now two and a half. Uh, of course, the totals played down. You got 39 here uh, currently. 
you know, talk about the game, and then more importantly, get get me after your take, uh, like you did it with the Michigan State game. Give me a, a final score. I'm I'm trying to envision what what needs to take place in order for the over to hit, the under to hit, Northwestern to a cover. What are your thoughts here, Eddie? No, you know, I mean, it, I played the under, but it's not hard to imagine that the over would hit because Purdue doesn't run the ball uh, whatsoever. So they're going to have to pass, but they're on a third string quarterback who's more of a runner, which does help the under a little bit. And Brom is obviously going to slow down his normal pace, but I still played the under. I'm on a third string quarterback at Purdue. I'm on a third string quarterback at Northwestern. Northwestern has uh injuries at every skill position they have running backs that uh are extremely slow looking on the field compared to their competition at all times uh we know that fitzgerald is going to play an extremely slow paced team uh slow paced game uh this is a very very big game for a lot of northwestern defensive players uh this this is getting to the point where they have to win a big 10 game that's their last opportunity to do it at home they have seniors that are going to go to the nfl uh they have two nfl uh linebackers um, and this is a big game for Northwestern. It's a very, very prideful uh, or program with an extremely good coach who's in a no-win situation this year. But uh, the only way I could play it is under. Um, there's just no way that you can look at this game and say over. But I think, honestly, if an, either team, if they hit 20 points, uh, automatically wins this game. I see a 2017-2014, 21-14 type of game. UTSA three and five. They head to Old Dominion. Old Dominion has not won since Week One, and that was against Norfolk State. They play competitive at uh, times, but uh, as you see with these uh, teams, the uh, losses start to uh, mount. And uh, I don't know, Eddie, are they too tired, or are they viewing this game as an opportunity to uh, chalk up a, a win? They're laying three and a half, a couple of fours, forty-three the total. And the first bet I made this week was UTSA. The wrong team's favored in this game. Period. Uh, Old Dominion's playing for next year. They have a coach who uh, is absolutely delusional. I think that he thinks he's not getting fired. Um, he keeps on talking about what they're building towards the future. I have no idea why he thinks that he's part of that. Um, and I love him to death. He's made me tons of money while they're at Old Dominion. But uh, he's got a really, really bad situation here. He has no offense whatsoever, even against the terrible teams of the uh, Conference USA. He just has no ability to move the ball whatsoever. And then we have UTSA, who's all of a sudden playing for a lot. If they get three wins, which is actually possible with their schedule, they go to a bowl, and that's humongous for Frank Wilson, who's trying to hold on to his job, and the kids seem to adore him. And then we have Narsu, Nars, Narsus, the uh, quarterback. He's a transfer from LSU. He was injured. Um, they thought I thought maybe that's why the game opened the way it did, but he's playing. Uh, he's probable now. So, yeah, grab your UTSA while you can. I think it ends up closing below a field goal for sure. Charlotte, 13-and-a-half on the road against UTEP, 58 the uh, total, Eddie. Not only does UTEP not have uh, anything going for them, they're playing for nothing, and they're playing for next year with uh, players for next year. And Charlotte is now suddenly playing for absolutely everything with two unbelievably great wins against North Texas and Middle Tennessee State. Both games where they came back, uh, well, they dominated last week against Middle Tennessee. Uh, the thing about Charlotte is that they have they've gone over so much because they have no pass defense whatsoever, but they have an incredible run defense. Uh, which we saw against Middle Tennessee State. Well, UTEP doesn't pass. Uh, at least they, they don't do it effectively. Uh, they don't do really think anything effectively. So I laid the number with Charlotte. I think that uh, Charlotte kind of names the score here if they if they can get up for this game, which they should be able to. Baylor also 8-0. Uh, and oh. They're in the uh, playoff discussion, although they got a ways to uh, go due to uh, a lack of uh, strength of uh, schedule. But a win here would certainly help the cause as they head to uh, Fort Worth. you got TCU sitting at 4-4. Four and four. Total play down. Uh, that seems to be a pattern with both TCU and Baylor. 53 down to uh, 48. Now you have Baylor here laying 2.5. And in fact, a couple of shops like Chris leaning toward 3, Eddie. Boy, I tell you, this this TCU team, um, I just read about how they lost another quarterback to transfer midseason. I don't know what Patterson is doing, but he's obviously not a player's coach, never really has been. Always very adamant about how much he hates the transfer. He doesn't, he's against players' rights. He doesn't, you know, and he's very vocal about it. It's really going to hurt them in the future. Um, well, it's hurting him now. Duggan got hurt last week against Oklahoma State. I watched it because I had money on the over. Uh, he really, really hurt himself. Like He was not able to lift his shoulder. They're saying he's probable. I don't know. Even if he's playing at 50%, he's a freshman who's not all that accurate. Uh, very, very good, you know, very good run defense in Baylor, obviously. Top 10 in the nation. Extremely good defense in TCU. Baylor is uh, Baylor's doing something that I don't like about rule. Uh, he plays to the level of his competition. West Virginia last week, very slow-paced game. 
uh, very predictable play calling. He's a defensive minded coach. And a lot of people forget that because he took over for Bryles and they were very fast paced in the beginning. Um, I like the under even at any number. It doesn't matter to me. I just don't think I don't think the TCU scores in this game, uh, especially if Duggan's hurt. And I don't think that Baylor has the goods on offense right now. I don't know what's going on there. I don't trust him. How does SMU uh, respond off their first loss of the uh, season? They're at home laying 21 after an opener of 23 against East Carolina. Total played up to 72, Eddie. Yeah, I like I like ECU a lot in this game. Uh, one, ECU is playing extremely inspired f- football, which I knew that they would. Um, they have a lot of really, really high-ranked uh, recruits who kind of got pushed around for a couple of years, especially on offense um and defense um i really like this coach houston i know they're not winning a lot of games i think that they're competitive in every game they should have beaten cincinnati last week um i think this is a also going to be a lame duck uh, effort for smu i think that they go out and they kind of half ass it that's just the way sonny dykes has always been off of the loss um and they're really banged up both their uh both their star wide receivers kind of questionable in this kind of situation i think that the number's just out of hand i made it 17 LSU Alabama, the big matchup of the uh, weekend. You got Alabama laying six. A couple of six and a halves, Eddie, 62 and a half the uh, total. Yeah, I played under. Um, we, we released under, and there was a good reason. I mean, I, I just can't. I watched that LSU Auburn game. Um, it, it made a lot of sense to me. There's no way Saban's going to go into this game and just get crazy within a shootout. Um, he doesn't play these kind of games against uh, LSU. He plays very, very slow and methodical and knows that his defensive line has a humongous advantage. Um, and this also is a chance for a secondary to finally be, you know, what we thought that they were going to be and prove themselves. But also we have an injured to a, he's not going to be mobile. Um, I imagine Alabama runs the ball more than we've seen all year long, except for against Arkansas. New Mexico State at uh, Ole Miss, another SEC non-conference uh, game. You got Ole Miss laying 28 and a half. Total really played up 60, now 64 and a half. Yeah, this is so ridiculous. I mean, everything about this. I laid the points in this game. Uh, it's ridiculous that New Mexico State in week nine being 0 and 8, uh, or week 10 has to go and play in front of a, a very rowdy Mississippi fan base. Uh, who This game means a lot to Mississippi, believe it or not, because they haven't been to a bowl in three years. Uh, they need wins, um, and they need them now. And I think that they just beat up on them. Um, I, I, I hate to say it, but I think this game gets really, really out of hand. What is New Mexico State even doing in this game? I mean, I hope that they don't get hurt. I hope nobody gets hurt in this game. That's all I can hope for. There's no way that New Mexico State's going to be up for this kind of situation. I mean, this is like something that you do in week one or week two or something like that. You don't go grab a paycheck week 10 when a team's playing for everything in the SEC. Well, I mean, to me, they're in a tough situation because you're independent, and who's the only league right now that isn't playing league games? That's you know because the SEC is so funky. So it's it's unfortunately, Eddie, I agree with you. It's it's like a perfect match where you know at least they didn't choose Alabama. I, I guess that's the only. Uh, <laughs> no, they played them in week two. Yeah, uh, you know, sixty-five but, to ten. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what the right solution is, but I think that you should be playing Liberties and UMasses in this time of year, and you're a really, really undersized program, um, you know, who's looking forward to next year and, and maybe a winning culture in the future. But having to go and play these kind of games in the middle of November is really tough. Speaking of uh, non-conference SEC games, Arkansas, I got a little different point spread here, Eddie. How about tw- how about four touchdowns worth of a difference here? Is Arkansas laying a one? Mm-hmm. against Western Kentucky, and uh, look, I, you know, I, I spent some time, I admit, trying to come up with an excuse uh, to play Arkansas because just from a, you know, from a talent level perspective, and I'm, I, look, I'm not trying to say that, you know, Arkansas is not loaded with SEC talent, but they certainly have better quality players overall top to bottom than Western Kentucky, but I still couldn't get there here, Eddie, did you, uh, Arkansas laying one fifty two and a half the total. Yeah, I played the total over – uh, Arkansas's defense is just so bad. I mean, it's unbelievable how bad they are. Uh, they can't stop any kind of passing at all. Uh, Mississippi State ran for 450 yards of a run offense on them last week. Um, and that's Arkansas supposed to be their strength of their defense. I mean, it's unbelievable how bad they are. I think that Morris is probably out at, in a couple of weeks here, which is a shame because he's a good coach, but he's an offensive coach and he doesn't know how to coach defense and he made the wrong hire on defense. And then we have Western Kentucky. They're starting to get exposed now. Um, Florida, Florida Atlantic and Marshall in back-to-back weeks got them for 400 yards. 
Uh, they were looking like this incredible defense, you know, and they're going to be the next UAB and everything like that. But it, it turns out that they were just playing a lot of old dominions and armies and they were really good run defense, but they don't have much of a pass defense. It's looking like, uh, so for the third week in a row, I'm betting an over in Western Kentucky and, um, I feel fine about it. Iowa State at Oklahoma. This looks to be a statement esque type of move. Is Oklahoma sitting seven and one, open thirteen, now up to fourteen and a half, sixty six and a half the total. Man, I tell you, I like I I don't like this Oklahoma team, but I made this game. I mean, like significantly high. Um, you know, I don't know how much people docked that Kansas State loss. Uh, going into a bye that was obviously a situation where they came out flat and, you know, everything happened and just snowballed from there. I love Iowa State, but they're not a team that's going to be trading points with anybody. Um, if they fall behind 21 to 7 in the first quarter, I don't know where they get their plays from. I don't know where they get enough production. That's always been the problem with uh, this Campbell team. They've got a good quarterback, but they don't have the big playmakers. They're not going to hit a lot of explosive plays. They have to play methodical. And uh, they have to have to produce. Uh, a lot of people don't realize Oklahoma's a pretty good run defense this year. Um, Iowa State's not going to be able to run on them. They're going to have to pass. Um, I, I, I bet Oklahoma. I just I just could never get close to ever thinking of betting Iowa State. I figured this game would open 17, and I would hope that it gets to 20, and I could play Iowa State. But when it opens 13, it's just too low. UAB at uh, Southern Miss. Southern Miss six forty nine half the total, Eddie. Yeah, this is another one. I I love Southern. I mean, I love Southern Miss. They are my favorite team in the preseason of the Conference USA. Um, and now we have a quarterback injury with UAB. But I bet UAB. Um, I might have to get off of it. Obviously, if this kid can't play. Um, but uh, the seven was too big, and the six is too big, especially if UAB has a quarterback. Uh, there's just not that much separating these two teams. I made the game two and a half, three at the absolute most. Um, Southern Miss, great team, but not a good run defense this year. They're starting to go around their defensive line. Everybody has been able to run on them, which was the problem at Louisiana Tech. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's UAB or pass for me. Georgia Southern mentioned earlier you had the uh, win there against Appalachian uh, State. Georgia Southern taking money this week as they head to uh, Troy. One, now three here uh, for uh, GSU. Total of 56, Eddie. Yeah, if this game loses, uh, it's the last time I bet Troy for the rest of my life, I think. I think I've lost more money on Troy than all the other teams combined. <laughs> um, anyways, Georgia Southern, I think that we're starting to see that the, the last couple of weeks, that Georgia Southern is what we thought Georgia Southern would be. Um, I think that they got rattled by very, very close losses to Minnesota and stuff like that. But Georgia Southern is absolutely phenomenally coached um, and they have so much talent on offense and defense uh, good pass defense Troy has only a pass offense Troy has no defense whatsoever um, I, I laid the points with Georgia Southern and felt good about it where's this respect for uh, Tennessee coming as uh, Kentucky opened two and a half Tennessee was favored here early in the uh, week but seen some uh, buyback Kentucky currently won coming in off a, a bye week at a total of 42 makes no sense whatsoever. Um, I can't find anything to like about Tennessee. I had them against UAB last week because so I knew they could bully them. And uh, they're a bad team. I mean, Tennessee, they don't do anything well. I mean, they, they, they don't run the ball well. Um, they're a run-based offense, it looks like, that doesn't run the ball well. And then they throw interceptions in the red zone every single game. Um, they're... Their, defense, their defensive efficiencies, they're all like 73rd, 75th in the country. Um, I think Kentucky wins this game, especially on a bye at a, a rowdy stadium on a Saturday night. I have absolutely no idea why anybody would think that Tennessee is the better team, uh, especially by like three points on a neutral ground. I can't possibly find any explanation whatsoever. So yeah, it's Kentucky for me. I also like the over in this game just because Tennessee doesn't run the balls. So they have to pass constantly. And they don't do it efficiently, which makes for pretty decent under or pretty decent overs when you have a total this low. This is probably I forgot the last time North Texas is uh, taking the money. They had to do a lot tech. La Tech opened six, now five and a half, seventy one and a half the total, Eddie. Yeah, this is um, this is the two biggest. Uh, this is the biggest game I've bet in a few weeks for a couple of reasons. I bet La Tech extremely. Uh, big and I bet the over pretty big. Uh, both uh, nervous situation. I'll be I'll be sweating every minute of this game. Uh, first of all, I don't understand why North Texas is getting money. I don't think that they're a good team at all. Um, they don't do anything well other than pass extremely well. Um, and not only that, they don't have really good wide receivers. And then they go to Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech has a great pass defense. They've really shut down every single kind of passing offense that they faced. The thing with North Texas is that they can put up 
points in bunches because they play so fast. Uh, that can kind of kind of rattle a team like Louisiana Tech at times. Nonetheless, Louisiana Tech, Jamar Smith, uh, they've lost one game this entire season, um, and that was to Texas in week one. Um, I think that they can blow the doors off this North Texas team. They're completely sound at every single level of uh, football. I have absolutely no idea why it's only five and a half. And if it's going to be any kind of game, and even semi-close, North Texas is going to have to put up 30 points. They're going to have to, I mean, there's just no way that this game stays under if North Texas is even semi-competitive. Um, I think Louisiana Tech, if they wanted to, they could make a statement, though. They could score 50 points in this game very easily. Ford International, Florida Atlantic rivalry game here. you got the Owls laying 10, total of uh, 59 and a half, Eddie. Yeah, another over for me. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of conference USA over all of a sudden. I realize that, and I'm fine with it. Um, I, I don't know Florida International. I don't think that they're a very good football team. Obviously, um, they haven't covered but one game all season. I don't think. And then Florida Atlantic, they're a good offense. I'm starting to think that they're a bad defense, though. I mean, Western Kentucky got a lot of yards on them last week, um, and they're a very predictable offense. I think that James Morgan, the uh, quarterback for Florida International, I think that he can get whatever he wants in this game. And also, I think that Florida International just, uh, you know, they, 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 they play to whatever style the opposition wants them to play. If the opposition wants them to play a fast-paced game, they play a fast-paced game. If the opposition wants to play a slow-paced game, they fall right in line. So, uh, yeah, I played over for a tiny bit. Iowa and uh, Wisconsin, uh, I'd have to look at the standings, but uh, whoever loses this game is obviously going to be eliminated from Big Ten uh, West uh, contention here as both teams uh, sit 6-2 uh, and uh, two, because, of course, you got uh, Minnesota that's uh, undefeated. Uh, I think both teams have to play Minnesota here uh, down the uh, road, but uh, nevertheless, you got uh, Wisconsin uh, open 9.5, now 8.5, 9, somewhere in that range here, Eddie. Low total, Big Ten football. I won't be watching this one. 38 the uh, total. What do you got? Yeah, I mean, I don't think you can do anything but bet under um, in this game. I bet I bet under it's still at the same number that I bet it at. I don't think you can get any lower in this game. I think the first team to, it's to 20 wins easily. Um, there's nothing that separates these two teams for me other than the fact that Wisconsin is at home and uh, they have a they have a much better pass defense than Iowa does. But for the most part, they just grade out, I don't know, two and a half, three points better. But I couldn't get there. And with Iowa, Iowa just doesn't do enough on offense. Um, they just run everything so slow, and they're so methodical. And then Wisconsin's kind of the same. Um, both these teams just want to get a lead and hang on to it and control the clock and uh, play really sound defense. Uh, good for them. It's super boring to watch for anybody that's not an Iowa or a Wisconsin fan. Um, but yeah, I played under for a small wager, and I still enjoy that. <laughs> Nevada at uh, San Diego State. I've read a lot of stuff with Nevada where, you know, playing younger players, looking toward the uh, future. I'm not going to put too much stock, Eddie, that, you know, they're five and four and they did, they are coming in off a win, but uh, against the New Mexico team. And it wasn't a very impressive win uh, either. Uh, now they head to uh, San Diego State. San Diego State now up to uh, 17 and a half after Oprah of 16 and a half. Uh, another low total here that is not in the uh, Big Ten. You got 39 here, Eddie. That's crazy. Uh, compared to what this total would have been, you know, four or five uh, weeks ago. Yeah, I think everybody's caught on to how good San Diego State's defense is. I mean, they're just unbelievable. And it's uh, this is like Rocky Long. I predicted at the beginning of the year that this would be Rocky Long's going back to his normal self kind of season. And uh, here we are mid-November, and Rocky Long has, I think, the seventh best defense in the nation and uh, is running like the most ridiculously slow offense as soon as he gets even a, you know, a three-point lead. Um, I have a friend of mine that called me Sunday night, and he said, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Nevada's getting 17, you know, and I said, oh, wow, you know, that that is quite a lot. I This is Circa opens or Circa openers before Chris came. And I started looking at the game and I said, how is Nevada going to score? I don't I don't see them scoring in this game. So, you know, I bet under um, I think it's the only play you can make. I think that uh, I think San Diego State wins this game, you know, 21 to three, something like that. Uh, Nevada can't score against anybody right now. It's really, really bad. Um, I don't know how an air raid team gets to the point where they can only score. Uh, 17 points against New Mexico at home with perfect weather. Um, it's getting pretty bad. They're on their th- third or fourth quarterback. So, yeah, under for me. I can't lay the points. Um, you know, I wish I was brave like some of these guys, but just not my thing. Great stuff here from Eddie Walls. Last two weeks, how about 18 and 4? 18 and uh, 4. Uh, get a par- Be a part of uh, this week. All of Eddie's selections available on his homepage or the Buy Picks page at Better IQ. 
uh, dot uh, com, and it starts here tonight. Got a couple of college football plays, courtesy of myself and Aaron Rennie. Got basketball as well, and of course, uh, this weekend NFL College of Football. It's all available again. The Buy Picks page, betteriq.com. Any questions? Reach out to us. Support at betteriq.com. Uh, That'll wrap up the uh, show. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as we break down uh, the NFL.